Thanks again, everybody, for coming. I'm Brooke Shelley. I'm the board co-chair for Basic Rights Oregon, and we just really love the turnout for our trans veterans and trans soldiers. Yeah. We actually have quite a few in that crowd today, which is awesome. Um, Christine and Kate, who are here, um, thank you so much for your service. Uh, all the other trans veterans who I haven't had the chance to meet, thank you so much. Um, we really want to tell you that you are valued and you are honored, and yeah, we want to make things better for you. So, um, my sister is also a trans veteran. Uh, she was in the Air Force. And, yeah. And when she came out, she wasn't able to transition because of the state of the military at the time. Um, and fortunately now, she's retired from military service and she's able to transition and, and live her life. But we want to make sure that's the case for every single trans service member, whether they're serving or done serving. So, um, yeah, we've got a really great program here today. Lots of people to talk about the current political climate, uh, the things that are going on, and how we're stronger than any of it. Um, yep. How as a trans community, we're able to be resilient. We're able to survive and thrive uh, regardless of what gets thrown at us. So um, we'll get kicked off here. The first person who's coming up will be uh, Lyles and also Oni. Um, they are trans veterans themselves, and they're going to talk a little bit here. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, there we go. <laughs> uh, my name is Lyles McFarland. I'm uh, ex Air Force. I was. Uh, Aircraft mechanic on C-130, C-5s, and uh, MH-53 Paypal helicopters. Uh, I came out uh, in 2013 after I'd been out of the military for three years because during uh, my time of service from 2006 to 2010, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was in full, uh, full effect. So the fear of actually coming out, uh, not only uh, being ridiculed, hated by your other uh, service members, but also the fact that you're afraid of losing your job and everything else. Uh, for me personally, I've been using the VA for uh, my medical transition. Uh, it's something that actually has led to me still being alive. Uh, I've tried multiple times in the military to kill myself because I'm trans, because I thought they could fix me, and after several years I realized that no, actually they can't, because there's not anything to fix. Uh, <laughs> When I got out of the military, I found out that the VA was covering uh, transition-related services after 2011. And I was convinced by one of my friends that I needed to go talk to somebody. And I spoke to the doctor of the VA, and they, and this is in deep South Carolina, of all places. And they were completely understanding, pushing for my rights. Uh, I immediately got on my medication. Uh, all, everything that I could ask for was done because of the VA. And if I hadn't gotten that care, I would not be able to afford it or even have the courage to do it myself. And I guarantee you, I would not be alive today. Wow. Um, I'm glad you are. <laughs> when Trump does things like this, he's not just affecting the rights of trans veterans that are actually or active service veterans. And he is, and it's, it's hurtful, but he's also hurting the trans veterans, the, the people that aren't the transgender that aren't in the military. Uh, like, everything that he's doing now is going to trickle down to every aspect of our lives. Uh, they're already trying to keep some of the bathrooms out of our, getting our birth certificates changed, getting health care. This is just the start, and it's, it's unfortunately going to get worse before it gets better. And we need not just trans people, but we need cis people actually talking to their family and their relatives to their Congress people. Are you, are you stopping your friends and family from saying transphobic things around you or are you just letting it slide because, you know, they're really good people who just make mistakes? And the reality is they're not good people if they're not even willing to try. Thank you. Hi, my name is Oni. I use he, him, his pronouns. I served in the United States Air Force as an aircraft hydraulic technician for five years at Dover Air Force Base. I was only on C-5s, and um, I had an additional duty as a sexual assault victim advocate as well. Here you go, Bobby. I'll try my best. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I joined the service because I thought it would heighten my quality of life, and it would give me the opportunity to better other people's quality of life as well. 
Uh, for me, at the time, it was the way that I could take control of my future and hopefully affect the world in a way that I wanted to, rather than the way I was being told I was supposed to. Um, the military did give me that opportunity, and I wouldn't be standing up here speaking right now if I didn't have that opportunity. So, for me, it was positive in several ways, and in other ways, it was negative. Uh, I did come up to my commander in 2014. I did come up to my commander in 2014. Um, he just shook my hand, said okay, and that was that. There wasn't any paperwork or disciplinary actions or anything. And in 2015, when Ash Carter had that working group for the Pentagon, I started to medically transition. Uh, that's when things got a little rough. I didn't have the best support that I could have from my own shop, but I did find service members on base that were willing to support me and give me everything that I needed while I was doing what I was doing. Uh, I left the military at the end of 2015, and I am receiving hormones through the VA as well. And like Lyle said, uh, if what happens happens, then it's going to trickle down to everyone, and we won't be able to get medically necessary services anymore. So uh, in regards to what's happening, we are taking away support from trans service members. The choice to serve is individual, whether trans or cis and that shouldn't be denied to anyone. We are invalidating the work that has been done to get this far, we are taking away livelihoods, and we are denying services that could greatly increase the quality of life of those who serve. But I do think we should really put emphasis on our non-binary, gender non-conforming, two-spirit, and intersex service members because I feel in all of this they've been overlooked. We put emphasis on trans men matching um, like male standards and following those male standards and trans women having female standards. But what if your gender marker is X or U? There are no standards to adhere to. So even if we did have trans military service, there's still a part of our population that is going to be oppressed. And we need to consider that and include them in all of our conversations in order to really be making a difference and really being for trans military rights. So I think the best way to honor way to honor trans active duty service members and veterans is to make sure that we are including that part of our population in our discussions instead of sticking to the binary standards that have always been there. Thank you so much for being here. We know that by standing up to Trump's agenda, that love will trump hate. Woo! Yeah. That's why we're here today. So I'm Nancy Hawk, and I'm the co-executive director of Basic Rights to Oregon, the state's largest LGBTQ advocacy organization. And I'm just so appreciative to see you all. Um, when we heard the news Friday night, we knew we had to do something and to send the message because President Trump's ban of transgender recruits in any capacity within the United States Armed Forces is disgraceful and harmful to transgender communities, whether they're in the military or outside the military. And our military and our government should never be used to discriminate. Sadly, it continues to be the same hateful and empty arguments that we've heard before. There was the argument that African Americans would harm military readiness, and that was rejected in the 1940s. That women in combat would hurt military readiness was rejected in the 1990s. And the argument against gays and lesbians serving was finally rejected in 2010. And so, in fact, we learned that when we repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, that allowing service members to serve with integrity strengthened our armed forces. allow the progress that's been made in recent years to be undone. An estimated 15,000 transgender Americans currently serve in our military and are putting their lives on the line. This ban and any purge of transgender service members will force those interested in enlisting into the closet and cause thousands of service members who have already come out under the Obama era policy to be discharged from their roles. Discharging talented service members simply because of their gender identity is discrimination. Just discrimination. And we won't stand for it. And it's just 
discrimination that will hurt thousands of American families and communities across the nation. Because the US, U.S. military is the largest employer of transgender people in the world. And we expect more from our president. That's right. We expect more from someone who's called commander-in-chief. We expect integrity and to uphold the law. All Americans should be allowed to serve openly with integrity and should be judged for their qualifications. Nothing more, nothing less. And I have a special message um, from Nathaniel Bohm. Um, he is the LGBTQ Services Coordinator for the Oregon um, VA. And he says that for every LGBTQ veteran who is here today, you have the unwavering support of the Oregon Department of Veteran Affairs. And then he wanted me to read his cell phone number, but instead I'll just invite you, if you don't have Nathaniel's cell phone number, to come to me and I will give it to you, because he wants to make sure every LGBTQ vet in our state has it, because that's how much he cares, and that's how much he supports you. So. Um, another person who has given us unwavering support is Senator Jeff Markley. Yeah. Um, and we have a special message from him who will be led by um, his awesome um, representative here, who's here today, Dan Marr. Thank you so much, Dan. The Senator wishes uh, he could be here with all of us today and, and sends his love. And uh, this message that he dropped. Closer. Sure. <laughs> Thank you all for coming out today. Uh, a few weeks ago, I stood with many of you across the street, rallying support of our transgender service members and veterans. Shannon Scott, a transgender Air Force veteran who served for 12 years, told us how she was forced out of the military once she decided, sitting on a plane among fallen soldiers, to be true to herself. Without that bigotry, the United States would have one more highly trained and decorated service member courageously and selflessly serving her country. Now, President Trump has taken us backward to that time when discrimination excluded certain Americans from serving their country simply because of who they are. Since that shameful time in our history, the military has become the largest employer of transgender Americans, with as many as 11,000 men and women in uniform identifying as transgender. Trump's order is a disgraceful, bigoted attack on transgender Americans who are honorably serving our nation Claiming his prejudice is for the safety of our nation is a repulsive falsehood. Discrimination doesn't make America safer, period. At our rally, Colleen Yeager, the mother of a transgender son, who you'll be hearing from in just a moment, <clears throat> said she most fears her son growing up to a future where he doesn't have every opportunity afforded to him because of the discrimination Trump is perpetuating. Under Trump's order, seven-year-old Eli can't dream of being an Air Force pilot. That discrimination has no place in the United States of America. We must return to gratefully accepting the contributions of all patriots who want to serve our nation. Please know that Oregonians stand with our service members, all of our service members. I will do everything I can to fight this order and make our transgender service members and veterans, families, friends, and neighbors feel safe and welcome in their state and in their nation. up next, we have a message from Colleen Yeager. Just over a month ago, the day after Donald Trump tweeted his desire to exclude transgender people from the military, my husband and my beautiful seven-year-old son, Eli, were driving along, news radio playing in the background. The speaker mentioned transgender people in his report, catching Eli's attention. Delightedly, delighted, he innocently exclaimed, Dad, they're talking about me. You see, Eli doesn't know that he's under attack by this administration because we have always loved him and his immediate community has embraced him. He doesn't yet know that not everyone accepts him, that he is a political lightning rod. As an almost second grader, he's focused on being a kid, pretending to be a ninja, learning to swim, and arguing with his big sister about a fair split of the remaining ice cream. <laughs> this hasn't always been the case. Between the ages of three and five and a half, Eli was angry and violent and distraught. 
He outwardly expressed hatred for himself, and my husband and I felt desperately unequipped to help him. It took some time observing, listening, and working with mental health professionals to determine where this unimaginable stress came from. But once it was clear, and Eli was free to be, to be who he knew he was, everything changed. We finally got to a place of relative peace, and in marches the Trump administration, hell-bent on conveying to my son that he is somehow less than. Now, Eli knows that Trump thinks he should be forced to use the girls' bathroom. He doesn't know, however, that the Trump administration is working daily to ensure that his other most basic rights are undermined too. He doesn't know that because he wasn't born fitting their narrow view of what is valid and acceptable, that he is now, thanks to this awful executive order signed Friday, officially deemed unworthy by his very own government to serve his country. These hateful, misguided actions serve only to fuel a climate of hate and violence aimed at an already vulnerable child. <laughs> Eli deserves better. My son didn't choose his gender or his body any more than you or I did. He's just a child worthy of being treated with dignity and respect and to be loved for who he is and to be given the chance to serve his community and country if he so chooses. As his mother, my nightmare is the day that he figures out that he is under assault because of something that is completely outside of his control. I and my fellow fierce parents and family members of transgender youth, many of you are here, fight every day to ensure that our transgender children and grandchildren and siblings and community have the same rights and freedoms as every other American. And we will not stop until every single citizen knows their worth. I know in my heart of hearts that we will win. Thank you. So this is a message from Sasha Booker. Sasha is a lawyer and she's a veteran. She was a Marine sniper. She used to work at Basic Rights Oregon. Then she went to San Francisco to work at the Transgender Law Center. And just a few weeks before this hateful ban, she started at Lambda Legal, which is just where we need her because she's helping to bring the case to overturn this ban. Sasha couldn't be here because she's in Washington, D.C., but she sent this message for us to read. This ban is disrespectful and dishonorable to the thousands of transgender men and women who are boldly and bravely serving our country. It deprives our armed forces of those wanting to serve at a time when the military is already facing threats on multiple fronts. It is also disrespectful to the leadership at the Department of Defense to work to develop and implement the current policy, which has been operating successfully for more than a year. Transgender service members and veterans have fought like hell for our country in the past, and in response to this shameful ban, we will continue to fight like hell, to defend our freedom to live and work free from discrimination for who we are or who we love. See you in court, Mr. President. My name is Matos Santos, and I am the legal director of the ACLU of Oregon. Uh, thank you, Basic Rights Oregon, uh, for organizing this today, and thank you all for coming here to stand with transgender service members and veterans. Today, I'm especially grateful to Lyles and Oni and all the other transgender service members and veterans here in Oregon and across our country. Thank you for your service and for your courage, both in and out of uniform. We owe our freedoms to you, and you deserve better than this. Yes. Friday, <laughs> Friday was a particularly painful day in this never-ending string of bad days since President Trump took office. 
President Trump's pardon of Joe Arpaio and his memo banning transgender service members and veterans from serving and accessing health care share a common thread. President Trump has no respect for our courts and he has no respect for us. While we at the ACLU cannot teach President Trump civility or respect, we can and will continue to teach him about the Constitution. <laughs> Tomorrow, we will also be filing a lawsuit in federal district court challenging President Trump's cruel, discriminatory, and unconstitutional policy. Like, like so many of his other failed attempts to discriminate, this policy isn't just bad, it's deadly. Denying transgender service members medically necessary health care puts their lives at risk. Um, banning their service after so many courageously came out over the last few years is divisive and hurts our military. This isn't right and it isn't legal. We've said it before and we'll say it again. President Trump, when you come for the most vulnerable communities, the ACLU will come for you. See you All right. I now have the honor of handing this mic over to uh, Chase, who is our trans justice coordinator here at Basic Rights Oregon. Thank you so much again for coming and uh, Chase will close us out. My name is Chase. I use the pronouns they, them, and theirs. I am the transgender justice trainer and organizer at Basic Rights Oregon, and I was born on a U.S. military base. Oh, wow. Both of my parents served and met and fell in love and got married in the United States Navy. They were following in the footsteps of their fathers, both of my grandfathers who served in the Navy and in the Army. And when my brother was old enough, he enlisted in the Navy as well. I learned a lot from growing up in a military family. And the most important thing I learned was how to stand up for what I believe in and how to be resilient. And as I came out as a transgender person, and as I joined my transgender community, I am so honored to be a part of a community that will always fight for what's right. In my work, I have the incredible pleasure of getting to know so many allies who care about transgender people. Three weeks ago, my co-organizer and I drove down the Oregon coast where we gave three trainings on transgender equality, and we packed the room in all three cities. We filled the rooms with Oregonians who care, who Oregonians who believe that it is right and just for transgender people to live their truth. This Tuesday, we are going to have 150 Portlanders coming to a training on transgender equality in Northeast Portland. And next month, or yeah, next month, Basic Rights Oregon is launching a program called Catalyst. Catalyst, something that speeds up change. Catalyst is the name of a cohort dedicated to building transgender leaders in our state. This is the work that we're doing. This is powerful and important work, and we cannot do it without our allies. We cannot do it without the support of our loved ones. We are so grateful that you are all here. We are grateful that you are here helping us transform Oregon. We are going to send a message that this state and this country will always stand up for our transgender communities. Thank you all for coming today. Thank you all for being here. Thank you to everyone who spoke this afternoon. I, uh, I just heard yesterday that you were going to be here at the City Hall, and I just said I have to be here with you to just tell you how revolted I am by our president. I didn't think he could quite stoop to this level, because this community knows not only do we love each other and love everyone and stand up for transgender equality, but our veterans, our service people, deserve better from our president. And so please, 
As far as I'm concerned, as your Chief Law Officer, there is zero tolerance for hate, and I consider this part of the hatred that is spreading throughout this country because of that man in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much. And again, thank you, everyone, for being here today.